Let's get started. Welcome everyone to Getting Approved to Fly with ForeFlight. In this webinar, we'll be discussing regulatory approval for organizations to begin using ForeFlight for charting and navigation. Let's go ahead and meet our presenters for today. Guys, go ahead and tell us about yourselves. Thanks, Jay. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Thatch Vandenberg. I'm a Boeing Associate Technical Fellow. I've been in aviation for many years uh, in a diverse set of roles from uh, air traffic controller to airline pilot. And for the last 20 years, I've been supporting Jeppesen and Boeing EFB programs relative to regulatory compliance and customer approval activities. I look forward to uh, presenting to you in a few moments. Uh, my name is uh, Martin Lund. I work for a customer success uh, for the international branch and also a regulatory support manager. Um, I have uh, my residential in Denmark and, and work out of the Odin's office. Hi, I'm Kimola. I'm uh, with uh, ForeFlight in the customer success team in uh, EMEA, so Europe region. Uh, I have a background uh, within sales operation and dispatch from a small company in Denmark, where I'm also based, and also as a commercial cargo pilot on an ATR. And my name is Jay Wiles. I work on the marketing team here at ForeFlight, and I produce all of our webinars. On today's agenda, we'll start with the sunset of Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck. We'll talk about the timeline and what this means for your existing chart coverage. After that, we'll take a broad look at international EFB regulations, the five-step approval process you can expect when switching to ForeFlight, and other significant elements of getting regulatory approval. Then we'll talk about the support that ForeFlight provides for operators, we'll go over the documentation package we have prepared for you to download, and we'll show you where operators are already having success in getting approval to fly with ForeFlight. We'll then review similarities between Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck and ForeFlight, we'll demonstrate the multiple places you can access charts in ForeFlight, as well as how to assemble flight binders, and we'll cover some basics on how to navigate the app, use the map, and see smart notes, which are called operational notes in ForeFlight. And then we'll take a brief look at additional features and benefits that ForeFlight provides that aren't in JEPFD. After that, we'll wrap up with some Q&A at the end. But before we move on, I want to emphasize the regulatory approval process we're talking about today only applies to multi-pilot accounts that require regulatory approval. If you're an individual user, you can go ahead and purchase ForeFlight. And if you use JEPFD now, or if you have in the past, Today's presentation will still help you become familiar with the ForeFlight interface and where to access charts. Before we begin, I want to mention you can ask questions during today's presentation using the GoToWebinar message panel on the right side of your screen. We'll respond one-on-one -on -one to as many questions as we can during today's presentation. We'll also take a few of the more popular questions that come in and answer them live at the end. If you have a question, ask it as soon as you think of it. As we get toward the end of webinars, the number of questions coming in goes up, making it less likely that we'll have time to get to everyone. If you encounter audio or other technical problems during today's webinar, first try leaving and rejoining the webinar. We've also found that customers joining from computers tend to have fewer problems using GoToWebinar than those trying to watch on mobile devices. Lastly, this session is being recorded and it will be posted at foreflight.com webinars in the next 24 hours. So with that, let's get started. First, we're going to briefly cover the sunset timeline for Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck. Support for JEPFD will end on the 25th of January, 2024, when the 2401 ARAC chart cycle becomes effective. Updated chart and data downloads will not be delivered for the 2402 ARAC cycle and beyond, so the app will only provide expired charts and data from then on. Additionally, JEPFD will be removed from Apple's App Store on the sunset date to prevent the app from being installed on new devices. However, JEPFD will remain on devices that already have it installed. When Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck is sunset though, your Jeppesen charting coverages will remain intact. There will be no change to your chart coverage and all data updates will be delivered in ForeFlight. It's important to point out this sunset does not apply to or affect Jeppesen Flight Deck Pro in any way. That's a separate app used by commercial airlines around the world. The information in today's presentation is intended for non-airline commercial operators. If you are part of an airline, please contact us at sales at foreflight.com so we can work with you on the best solution for your operation. Now I'm going to hand things over to Thatch for a big picture look at regulatory issues that affect switching EFBs for your organization. Thank you, Jay. Hello all again. 
I am just going to give you guys a, a quick refresher on what is expected related to getting to EFB program approval uh, with emphasis on the fact that this effort going from your current approved EFB program and bringing in ForeFlight Mobile in replacement to Mobile Flight Deck should really be handled simply as a delta or a differences activity. And when combined with all the support that you will receive in making that transition should be a uh, relatively minor effort, all things considered. So again, as you all probably remember, the regulatory approval process exists of five different phases. Um, the first of which is when you tell your regulator that you want to make a change to your EFB program. And of course, in this case, it would be that you're changing the EFB application you're using from Mobile Flight Deck to for flight. That will then get you in their official queue, if you will, with perhaps even a project number. And once you have that, then you can go in and start putting together the accounting of the differences, the delta between what you have now and what bringing on for flight will affect. And once you account for all that, you provide that back to the regulator in the form of an application. And then once they have a look at that and believe you've covered everything, you then go into th the third phase where you and perhaps working with your regulator actually then go in to all of your various components of your EFB program and review what is specifically needed to get from what was to what needs to be um, and start to put those changes into place. And once you have those all in place uh, to the satisfaction of your regulator, they will then grant you an interim approval to use the new solution, i.e. ForeFlight Mobile, in your um, uh, line operations and they may require you, as is the case when you first bring on an EFB application and a replacement of paper, to continue to use uh, your existing solution, i.e. mobile flight deck, which is, as Jay pointed out, um, given the, the sunset plans, um, would and should perhaps encourage you to get going now so that you can use mobile flight deck in parallel. Otherwise, you perhaps may have to have something else as a backup. But at any rate, you will have approval, uh, interim approval. And once you've completed that and provided that accounting back to the regulator, they'll grant you your final approval where you can then um, start using for flight mobile just as you had been using mobile flight deck. So there, there will be sort of some significant elements, and, and these are things that just occur to me after my years of experience with that. It's, um, that will be helpful to you. One, make sure you communicate regular, regularly with your regulator once you've started this all off, because it will be important to solicit their feedback or for you to give them feedback and update on your progress. That just keeps everything in sync. And as you might imagine, uh, your emphasis really needs to be on your particular re responsibilities relative to policy. Then in terms of the program evaluation itself, again, it's a Delta evaluation, and you want to focus not only on the EFB application and the functional differences, but also any effects that might have elsewhere in your approved EFB program, for instance, to training or maintenance or uh, anything that might be within scope of your program. And then, like I said before, that's uh, likely minimal compared to your very initial approval activities that you went through. If you don't, if you aren't provided a checklist by your NAA or your regulator to help you through that process, I would suggest that perhaps you may find value in the FAA's 8900.1 order and specifically volume four, chapter 15. Those would be very helpful as they're, they're really consistent around the world and uh, you can find those online. Then ultimately you'll, you'll submit all the report, not only the, the initial report, but then the final report and the details that you will have in that final report, you will have worked out along the way with your regulator. And here's just a few notes for you, uh, just to close up my section. 
I think might be helpful to you, I would suggest that you take the any materials that you get from ForeFlight relative to the state of compliance, regulatory compliance. Once you take possession or once the ForeFlight mobile application is delivered to you, you can then provide that to the regulator and say, here is material that we've gotten from ForeFlight Mobile. And as you can see, they have gone line by line through the regulatory policy. And there are items that we will complete as part of our activities to get to approval. Again, and finally, this should all just be a Delta exercise, changing what you have in your EFB program related to Mobile Flight Deck to whatever is required for Four Flight Mobile. It should all be relatively straightforward and I wish you all the best of luck. And now you'll hear from Martin who will tell you more about what Four Flight will specifically provide to you. Thanks, Thatch. So uh, what we do is that we provide documentation and guidance material for our customers and soon-to-be customers that are starting the process of applying uh, the Type B approval, basically on uh, covering EASA regulation, but also uh, international, and between uh, the operators and the authorities of the AOC of their origin. So what we did was we collected a package that consists of various documents, uh, among others, compliance matrix, risk assessments, decompression reports, but also all the relevant documentations uh, that are relevant for the for the application. So. Currently, we uh, covered the aspects of navigation, uh, which is where we have the, the most of our customers uh, covered from. But we're also building our package and documentation around expanding to other areas, also to cover mass and balance, runway analysis, and active navlog. So what we did was we built a sub page for um, for our full flight um, homepage, which is accessible if you are either a trial customer or subscribe customer. You will use your login and password from full flight to log in and either download a single documents or the full package. This link will be sent to you via the sales team or a customer success. As our support group here, we'll also uh, follow up on the process that you are as a customer. So we keep contact with you to monitor if uh, you uh, run into any issues with your potential regulators, something we can assist you with along the way, but also to have a full updated picture on which, com uh, which companies slash countries that are approved uh, within uh, the Type B uh, regulation. Um, it's vital for us to stress that this is not an EASA template that we have, uh, and we are applying from a software provider standpoint. This is uh, an approval that goes from the operator to the authority, and uh, that is, um, as you see on the screen here, uh, uh, the SPA EFB 100 that defines that it's the operator that's been granted the approval from the competent authority within your country. So right now we have um, a quite substantial list of countries in Europe uh, within the ASA regulations that are approved already for navigation with the use of full flight. Um, a handful of uh, actually 15 countries uh, right now are approved uh, without uh, within the 26 countries that we know where full flight is represented. Um, on top of that, we have contact with uh, companies in four countries, Netherlands, Austria, Switzerland, and Serbia. Uh, and they are to, to be approved within the next couple of months, actually. So um, a quite large part of Europe is actually um, getting approved with using uh, the use of full flight for navigational use. And the most of them have uh, zero to none uh, pushback from the authorities uh, uh, using uh, the, the documentation package that we have. So the, uh, the documentation package consists of uh, one big vital document called the Compliance Matrix. It's built up by various chapters and now related to the implementation and the approval of using the app for chart viewing slash navigation. There will be some cases where ForeFlight is able to satisfy the entirety of it, uh, where others is, is only uh, satisfied by the operator. Also, some are shared responsibility between ForeFlight and the operator, and those for those last items, notes have been entered explaining uh, what the ForeFlight contribution is. 
Another document is the operational risk assessment. So that's a document that is provided by us and can be used as support and development for you as an operator to build your own risk assessment. As the, as the rules and the regulations say by the OGEN 200 is that the final risk assessment must be carried out by each operator prior to entry into operation of the EFB system and parts of it uh, parts of it should be the hazard identification and the risk management process. One of the other documents that are available to that documentation package is uh, the Ops Approval Quick Reference Guide, which is us uh, basically made some documentation around narrowing down uh, the search for items that are related to navigational functions within uh, Four Flights Pilot's Guide. Also, we have the Four Flight Mobile Legend which is uh, an addendum that describes the coloring symbology and layering that are used in Full Flight Mobile and can be used for the operator to make uh, HMI assessment. And last but not least, uh, the, uh, another joint um, documentation uh, document uh, with Jefferson is the rapid decompression test report, which is test result for all the iPad models, which are currently supported by the, iOS, the latest iOS version. We do not support uh, the early uh, versions uh, that are outdated or no longer supported by uh, Apple. So this concludes uh, my presentation and uh, the short rundown of uh, the documentation package that I provided from ForeFlight, and uh, I will hand over to, uh, to you, Jay. Thanks, Martin. Camilla, who's up next, is going to demonstrate many key aspects of ForeFlight including how to activate your Jeppesen charting coverages in ForeFlight. But before that, as you prepare to make this transition, I want to show you how to deactivate your charts for pilots in your organization through my.jeppesen.com. Now, you may need to do this first so you can free up the coverage seat before activating charts in ForeFlight. So on the bottom right of this screen, click on the Manage Installs section. From this view, you can disable individual licenses. So on this screen, you'll click Deactivate. After you do that, this box will appear to confirm the deactivation, and once you click deactivate here, it cannot be undone. If you're an individual Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck customer, you can deactivate your charts directly in JEPFD. In the iOS Settings app on your device, scroll down on the left-hand menu until you find JEPFD and select it. Then scroll to the bottom of the settings list on the right and enable the very last option that's labeled deactivate. After that, you'll open JEPFD to confirm the deactivation, and then you can activate your charting coverage in ForeFlight. To show us how to do that and much more, I'm going to hand things over to Camilla. Thanks, Jay. So I'll start here by showing that once you've logged into the ForeFlight mobile part, uh, the most important part to be able to see your Jeppesen charts within the app is to go to the More tab. Here, you can scroll down in the right-hand side. You can scroll down to the Jeppesen tab. This is where you can install any coverage that your admin uh, have linked on the account. You simply just hit the install coverage, and then you hit whatever coverage you might need. You'll hit the install button. Here, it will now make sure that it's uh, linking the coverage that you will need for your operation within the ForeFlight mobile app. In the More tab here, you can also go to the Accounts page. Here, you will be able to change your password, and if you were to forget it, you would could also hit Forget uh, Forgot Password. And you can also you will also have an overview of your subscription, and if you were to need it, you can sign out of the device. From the More tab, you can also see the most latest uh, version of the app if you go to the About. Then in the top, you will see it states above uh, About version 15 point something, and that is the most latest version of the ForeFlight mobile app. Right now, there is a, a small one in the More tab that basically shows us that we have some downloads that we haven't done, or is it is downloading something. And if you hit the More tab and you go to Downloads, 
This is where you have an overview of the downloads and you can uh, manually also go in and select any downloads if you need to. Otherwise, it will automatically start the download and you will find the dates uh, for the currency of the charts here. And then you scroll down, you will find a section here that says Jeppesen charts, where you will be able to check the dates of the Unroute charts and the terminal charts. Now moving forward to see the charts, you would go to the flights page. From here, you will have the flight that you are going to do today with the overview. And then in the right hand corner, you click the send to. From here, you can send the flight to the plates or charts place uh, tab. Simply just click it and that will create a binder. This flight binder will then uh, create the destination and departure airport with the specific charts that you might need. So here, as you know it, you simply can click on the departure icon and then you can select multiple departure plates if needed. The same applies, of course, for the departure where you can tick multiple charts off and that will make you being able to swap between charts as you know it with three fingers simply sliding from one side to another sliding between the the charts you will also be able to zoom in and zoom out of the charts and even making any annunciations so if you want to highlight anything on the charts you simply just click that and then you can draw anything on that. And then in the upper right hand corner, you can hit done. That will save the annunciation. And then when you then send them to the maps page, you will be able to see those again. If you were to need it, you can hit the different airport tabs here. So if you hit Pisa here, you can click that one and then you can select a different airport. So if you are going to your alternate, you can simply just search by the airport here. So let's say we're going to Rome. You can actually search that and it will find the airport. So you will be able to swap between that in order to change uh, the airport. So you can see different charts for the different airport. If you go back to the flights page, you can from here send the flight to the maps page. Again, upper right hand corner and send it to the map. Now you have a view that you will know. And from here you can zoom in and out. And then you see the long route all the way. In the upper left hand corner, you can select multiple layers on this view where you can go to the IFR low or the IFR high. And you will also have other multiple layers that you can add on top of this layer if you want to. You can even on the left hand side here, you can add multiple layers also. So as you know, so you can add in the airport rings, airways, terrain, etc. Simply by a quick filter here on the left hand side. Other different settings for the layers will be found up here in the settings in the small gearbox sign. Here you have a way to quickly access some of the map layers depending on what layer and view you want and other uh, extended Settings will be found on the More tab and in the Settings tab, where you can search by any different settings. This is also where you can change the app theme if you want it in light mode or dark mode, depending on when you're flying. From here, as you know from previous year, and you are 
you might be used to, you can also find the ups notes. You can simply click on this small number and that will, of course, as you also know it, it will highlight an area where you'll have some specific details. And then as you see here on the right hand side, the number two is some ups operational notes where you can find that with all the specific information that this operational note might hold. To see the charts on this map layer, you can do it by multiple ways. You can click on the flight plan window here in the top. You can find, click on the airport, and then you can show, you can see in the bottom, show plate. Then you can select what plate you want to see. From here, you can click on any of the plates you want to see. And then you will have the chart overlaid on the map. So if you need to follow a specific procedure, that will even show on the map too. You can click on the small icon here on the left hand corner of the chart. And from here, you can dim if you want to the chart. You can invert the colors depending on if you're flying at nighttime or not. And you will also be able to turn on and off any annunciations that you might have created on the map. You can also hit on the right hand upper corner, you can hit the full screen to see the one, uh, to see the chart in full screen, like you had in the binders page, or go map, go back to the maps page, and then you can hide the plate if you're done using it. You can also go to the search bar in the right hand corner, click and then search by any airport. So again, let's say you're flying to an alternate today instead, and you want to find that one, you can search by it and find it in a list, or you can simply just click any airport that you might need. And from here, that will open a small window on the right hand side with informations. And if you click procedures, you'll have the possibility to find any charts again. And it's all separated in specific tabs, such as airport, departure, arrival and approach. You simply just click the one you will need and you can click on the map. If a chart has the map icon next to it on the right hand side, it means the map is zero reference. That also means that you will be able to put it on the maps page. So if one of the maps like here, like the EASA notes abatement, that means it's not zero reference, which means you will not be able to put it over on the map overlay. You can also go in the left hand corner, you can go to the airports page. From here, you will also be able to find the same information that I just showed you, where you have all the procedures from an airport and uh, all, the pro all the charts if you want to see them. It works the same that you can have all the most recent that you've just recently flown to. You can have your favorites and you can search in the search bar up here and search by any airport you want to. This is how you will be able to see your charts within ForFlight Mobile to be able to use it uh, for flying with the, the Jeppesen charts. Thanks, Camilla. In addition to the benefits Camilla demonstrated, which you can already do in Mobile Flight Deck, here are just a few of the many additional capabilities that you'll get with ForeFlight. First, flight plans can be filed directly from ForeFlight in supported regions. Routes, flight plans, documents, aircraft profiles, and much more are synced between all of the devices signed into your account, and they can be accessed in ForeFlight on the web as long as your devices are connected to the internet.
Forflight also has a list of advanced performance capabilities with built-in aircraft performance models, comprehensive routing options, and much more. There are also numerous weather capabilities within Forflight. Camilla showed the layer selector on the maps tab, where you can find many layers that can be added to the map, giving you the ability to see how weather could affect your flight. Forflight can also connect to some newer panel avionics. You can find out which models we support at forflight.com connect. And once you're in the Forflight ecosystem, you can make it do a lot more for your organization or flight department. It integrates with several other essential capabilities. Forflight Dispatch allows for collaborative, multi-user flight planning, keeping your entire operation in sync by providing a centralized list of all planned and filed flights. Its scheduling API allows Forflight to integrate with scheduling providers and enterprise systems to load new flights. Dispatch also integrates with several popular flight service providers, including Jeppesen International Trip Planning Services. You can learn more at forflight.com dispatch. And lastly, Runway Analysis provides sophisticated runway and obstacle analysis for turbine aircraft. It's fully integrated with ForeFlight's planning workflow. Dispatchers and pilots can access runway analysis, helping ensure a safe flight. You can learn more about this at forflight.com RWA. As Martin mentioned, while the regulatory documents we currently offer only cover charting and navigation, they are in the process of being expanded to cover dispatch, runway analysis, and mass and balance. For EFB administrators, there are even more benefits to using ForeFlight. Here are just a few. Administrators can centrally manage organization aircraft, allowing for easier aircraft management and reduced setup time. Pilots can view the details of shared aircraft and use them for planning, but details of the aircraft, including performance profiles, are locked from editing except by the administrator. In addition to aircraft, administrators can manage users, their devices, and Jeppesen chart coverages for every pilot. We also offer self-serve commerce with simplified billing. Now that means you can go online to make changes or mix and match your chart coverages. You can also purchase an add-on like ForeFlight Dispatch or Runway Analysis for any aircraft in your fleet. As an administrator, you can also distribute company documents to pilots right in ForeFlight through cloud documents. Now that wraps up today's presentations, but before we get into Q&A, I want to mention another webinar that we have coming up, the simple transition from JEPFD to ForeFlight. Today we focused a lot on the regulatory aspects of switching from Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck to ForeFlight, while also touching on a few things that pilots need to know about using ForeFlight. Well, in this upcoming webinar, we're going to take a deeper dive into what pilots need to know to transition over to ForeFlight, including where to find all the things you're used to in JEPFD, including charts and map layers and more. And we'll add in several things that ForeFlight has that you haven't had before in JEPFD that could be useful to your flying. You can sign up for that webinar in two ways. First, you can visit forflight.com slash jeppfd-pilot-webinar, and that'll take you right to the registration page. Now, I know that link's a little long, so you can also just follow the link to the registration page from forflight.com slash webinars. And lastly here, I want to mention these useful links to you. First, forflight.com slash regulatory dash documents is where you can log into your Forflight account to download the documentation that Martin reviewed earlier. Next, when you're ready to get started with ForeFlight Mobile, visit ForeFlight.com slash first dash steps. On that page, you can review the steps we talked about to move your Jeppesen charts from Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck into ForeFlight, and how to configure other downloads, set up aircraft profiles, and start planning. Third, you can register for more webinars and watch past ones at ForeFlight.com slash webinars. We have webinars specifically covering using ForeFlight as a new customer, ForeFlight Dispatch, Runway Analysis, and everything you need to know as an administrator of a multi-pilot or group account. Lastly, you can reach out to our sales team at sales at ForeFlight.com. They can set up a trial account so you can download the regulatory document package we mentioned just a moment ago. And if you already have a trial account and you're ready to take the next step towards switching to ForeFlight, they're ready to help with that too. Now with that, let's move on to some questions. And thank you all so much for the great questions that we've gotten today. Um, I want to, before we jump into those, actually one thing I meant to mention earlier is that um, ForeFlight is offering a discount for Jeppesen Mobile Flight Deck customers that have not switched to ForeFlight yet. Um, we've been offering it throughout November. Uh, you should have gotten an email from Jeppesen earlier this month. Um, that includes 50% off of new ForeFlight subscriptions purchased by tomorrow um, through the end of November. And then during the month of December, we'll be offering 25% off for those subscriptions as well. If you'd like to learn more and uh, make sure you qualify, um, you can visit forflight.com slash jeppfd-discount. 
And um, I know that a lot of people have been interested in that and hopefully you are as well. So with that, um, now I will actually jump into some questions, despite what I said a minute ago. Um, so Thatch, uh, I've got a couple questions here that I think are really, um, really in your wheelhouse. So uh, the first question I have is uh, from someone who says, I'm a, I fly for a Part 91 operation. We use four flight and mobile flight deck already both on our iPads. Do I need regulatory approval? Um, yeah, uh, thanks very much, Jay. Um, well, and it kind of depends what kind of 91 operator uh, you are. If you're a 91K operator, then yes, you do need approval. If you're any other kind of 91 operator, um, you do not, um, as you are essentially self-approving. But I always encourage folks to look at the uh, at the because 91 is, a, is an FAA designation, uh, to look at the FAA guidance, which is AC 12076, uh, D is the most recent one, and perhaps even the FAA order 8900.1, volume four, chapter 15, which provides the guidance for the operators that do need approval. And you may see things in there, even though if you're not required to get approval, you may see things in there that, uh, you find interesting in terms of uh, mitigating whatever risk you may have in your use of an EFB. Um, if I understand correctly, this webinar is uh, is largely being attended by operators uh, from the EU, and um, there is a similar construct uh, in EASA policy where uh, some non-commercial operators flying complex aircraft also have to comply with the EFB approval requirements um, that are dictated in the uh, air ops, uh, in, in uh, the easy access rules, um, air operations policy guidance, uh, and in particular part SPA. But as I recall, they don't actually have to be granted formal approval but they nevertheless are required to comply. So how that manifests itself, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's always been my understanding that those operators could on, be asked to prove that they are compliant. And of course, if they're not, then that the chips will fall where they are. So I hope that answers that question. Wonderful, thank you, Thatch, I appreciate it. Um, the next question here, I'll, I'll go ahead and take. Um, we had a question about downloads, asking if they occur automatically in the background um, when ForeFlight is not open, or they were asking, does ForeFlight need to be open first? And so I'll go ahead and show you what this looks like on my iPad. I am just opening ForeFlight here, and you'll see this uh, red 94 at the bottom. I haven't updated my iPad in a bit. Um, so if I open up the more menu, I'll see the downloads there and then it'll show that I have 2.2 gigabytes, you can see down here, of data that needs to be downloaded. I can tap download here. Something else that you can do is um, go into your settings and enable um, automatic downloads. So I have those enabled as well. So if I hadn't jumped on it right when I opened it, um, that would have been taken care of for me. Um, it's important to point out that this, you know, you're required to be on Wi-Fi um, to download, uh, th to be able to download new data and charts. Um, you can opt to do it through cellular as well if you'd like, and it does not by default use any um, thing like GoGo or, or, or SATCOM connection through, you know, if you're using it in flight and connected to a system like that. So um, just in speed and data is usually a concern there. Um, with that, let's, uh, Thatch, I've got another question for you here. Um, can you talk about where, uh, I guess the question is, where can we find the in-route manuals? Um, that uh, is a sort of an interesting question because there's two parts to that. There's, um, at least as, as I'm reading it, there's the, what we would consider to be the in-route charts, and then there are manuals and um, uh, in the, I'll just interpret what I think you're asking about there. Forflight does offer the um, uh, 
en route charts in their uh, ForeFlight mobile application. Um, manuals then is, I'm not sure what was intended by that, but um, there are also manuals um, related to explanatory content that Jeppesen has historically offered. I don't know what is offered in that respect uh, at ForeFlight. But I hope that that answers your question. I know that we have a lot of resources within ForeFlight um, with Jefferson, you know, with manuals and and obviously the charts. Um, if you have any questions about that, you can reach out to the to the sales team. I know that they'd be happy to help with any specific questions you have. Um, the next question here, I'll go ahead and take. Uh, someone asked, "Can I see Jefferson charts on the web, or do I only have access to them via ForeFlight?" Um, and that is something we're working on right now. So, uh, you know, a, lo a lot of people that have been using Jefferson Mobile Flight Deck have also used JetView in the past to view uh, charts on the computer. Um, ForeFlight um, is working on the ability to view Jefferson charts within ForeFlight on the web if you purchase your charts through Jefferson. Um, that is, and when that ability becomes available, JetView will be sunset as well. It's not on the same timeline as Jefferson Mobile Flight Deck. We don't have a date um, just yet, but that is um, that is coming. Now, if you purchase Jefferson charts through ForeFlight, um, you can already view them on the web and on your iPad as well. Um, let's see. Uh, that's another question for you um, it, regarding. Uh, EASA regulatory documents. Um, th these documents are based on the on the EASA framework, um, but this person's asking if they can use the same information for Mexico's regulatory framework through AFAC. Yeah, um, there are also um, the the original webinar uh, was is focused, of course, on the uh, on the EASA context, but there are also the same. Um, support materials available from the FAA perspective. And in my experience, um, uh, operators in Mexico can use the FAA documents, but uh, it, it, you could just ask your representative what they prefer. Um, between the two, essentially every eventuality is covered. So um, either or can be uh, provided. I want to mention again this uh, this discount I uh, failed to mention at the beginning of the webinar. But if you have not, um, if you're not a ForeFlight customer yet, this discount uh, is available to you, 50% uh, off if you um, reach out by tomorrow and and purchase by tomorrow, um, and 25% off if you purchase in the month of December. So we will. Um, have all of that then one other thing uh that was just brought up um that i should also mention is on that same forflight.com slash webinars tomorrow you can also register for future webinars which i know i mentioned earlier but one that we have coming up tomorrow that you might be interested in coming up at noon central time or 1800 zulu time um is focused on ForeFlight's new oceanic plotting capability. Now, this was just released yesterday. Um, we've talked about it with a lot of customers already, though, especially at MBAA base in Las Vegas last month. So if that is of interest to you, I'd encourage you to visit ForeFlight.com slash webinars to, to register for that as well. And um, we will look forward to seeing you there. And if not, we look forward to seeing you on the next webinar. I want to thank you all so much for coming. And uh, please reach out if you have any questions.